very bright in here. The future is so bright. It's not actually. It is. Look, Eric, get a shot. The, the shades sun. are closed. It's still it's like, bright, and don't, I've don't be a diva. I know. I I have gotten three hours sleep, so I'm hiding the bags. But a good thing did come from my oh, trip. I know on vacation. Yeah. I'm gonna chuck either this mug or my new Aladdin pen at you. <laughs> The thing is deadly. Mr. Aladdin, sir. <laughs> Mr. Aladdin, sir. What will your pleasure be? What will your <laughs> pleasure be? <laughs> Throwing this at Jeff. That'll be my pleasure. Roll the open. Here we go. Have a seat. Save your energy. We have an hour. I said if I was going to do TV, because I was never not going to be myself. You're sitting next to one on the couch. So let's just say that. Be yourself, but not too much of yourself. Now, here's Jason. Ask anyone here, the audience is make or break the show. Forget about the guy whose name is on the floor. Speaking of that, let's start with this. Now, here's the deal. And I want to give a little context before we start with the monologue. Uh, if you're new to us, like if you're in Iowa, Orlando, Chicago, uh, the Jason Show next season will be 10 years. So we've been on the air 10 years. I've been in television since God was in diapers. Uh, I was 20, 25 years. Uh, yeah. Can just get a close up of my face. You'll see it all. Uh, now, I say all that because here we go. We get a lot of comments on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok. We read them all. When we do a segment on Mondays, we're going to see one called The Mailbox. But one comment on YouTube has the staff cracking up. So here we go. It's posted on YouTube under last week's segment with Emily Roberts from Snake Discovery. Now, when I introduce her, I say this to you guys. She is immensely popular. She's a social media juggernaut. This video just on our stuff already has more than 45,000 views just on YouTube. And that's a good number for that's a good number for our little dog and pony show here. Well, and this comment is the staff's favorite. Here we go. They say, quote, I feel like Snake Discovery and Jason are the equivalent of Taylor and Travis. <laughs> yeah. It's so wonderful to see what Emily is doing for that lovely Jason fellow. <laughs> it's so good for his new career. Yeah. In that scenario, am I Taylor or Travis? I think I'm Travis. I think I'm Travis. Whatever. Hey, I don't care how you watch, just watch. Roll it, Leo. Let's start. Here we go. Screaming for you. How you I'm, doing? I just, I, I'm just here for that pen. Oh, I my mean, new honestly, Aladdin pen. I know it's going to drive people crazy. I, I got to say, I might have had a cocktail or 14 uh, when I bought this a couple nights ago at Disney. But anyway, it's, uh, I love Aladdin and it yeah. weighs like 10 pounds. It does. It's a very it's heavy deadly. pen, but it's a deadly pen. How you doing? Those are the kind of things girls keep in their purses. So if they ever get attacked, you can just like wow. throw it at it. Yeah. <laughs> how, you, how you doing though? I'm good. How was your trip? Welcome back. It was good. Yeah. I went there, I went back over the weekend. 
you know, we the Jason shows in Orlando, uh, we spent some time. It, it rained cats and dogs, mm. and I felt bad for all the families that that's their one time to go. But I got to tell you, the, the most interesting thing was, you know, we have a new producer here on the Jason show, uh, <laughs> a BB, Baby Bjorn. Uh, and yeah. Hey, Leo, Eric, can we get a shot of BB? He's in the studio here. There's my BB right there. He's the best. Okay, let's get right there. He is. Yeah. That's my boy. Yeah. 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 Bjorn hates to be on television. <laughs> Loves it entirely. <laughs> He hates it. <laughs> He's so shy. Anyway, I love him. Oh, God, I love him. If I was a marsupial, I would put him in my pouch. I love him so much. So you, you just saw B.B. right there. And B.B. and I were friends uh, before he got the job. We're friends now. So I, I uh, flew home yesterday. And the flight, <laughs> the flight attendant, the flight attendant when I boarded, you know that old cartoon where there's an angel and there's a devil, like the good side? I met... BB's evil twin yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. Because and 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 I wanna and I and I wanna be nice. Everyone has a, flight attendants put up with so much crap, but this flight attendant had no time for me, nope. had no time for my shenanigans, had no time for the world. I boarded the plane. I boarded the plane, I'm like, because I'm I'm happy, you know, I'm I'm I try I go, hi, and it was like <laughs> And then I, I ordered a Diet Coke, and it was like this. And I'm like, oh, God, I go, thank you. I'll get to thank yous and your welcomes a little bit later. But I was like, thank you. He had no time. And I look at him, and I go, oh, my God, he looks just like B.B., but with darker hair. So And a darker soul. It's literally B.B.'s evil twin. I, I, yeah. Anyway, yeah. B.B. is much nicer, much nicer, but yeah. I did feel bad. It's a late flight. I felt bad for the flight attendant. Anyway, let's get ready. Let's start the show. Let's do the hot dish. Roll in, Leo. <laughs> he did. He had no time, girl. Nope. Anyway, I had to put on that lip balm. Uh, let's start with this. Call this the dressing room dust up. Now, we were in rerun yesterday. This all went down on Friday. We know this is a few days old, but people are still talking about it, and I haven't really had a chance to, to chime in. Singer and actress Kelly Rowland was a guest on the Today Show to talk about her role in a new Netflix show. Now, the plan was then, after her initial appearance, for her to come back and co-host the third hour with Hoda, who, uh, and so basically filling in for Jenna Bush Hager. But as I'm sure you saw on the interwebs, reports are that Kelly... And again, reports are, rumors are, she walked out shortly before the show began, claiming, claim, leaving the show in a lurch, claiming that the dressing rooms were too small and not good enough for her. Well, today's show staffers offered Kelly and her team several other options, but they didn't like any of them. So again, according to the rumor mill, she left. That's when the Today Show turned to singer Rita Ora, who I guess was just at like Jamba Juice down the road or something. <laughs> like they just pulled Rita from Jamba Juice or something. Anyway, who, who agreed to fill in at the last minute. And Rita, yeah, and Rita confirmed. Here's what we know for sure. Rita did confirm on Instagram she had about two minutes to prepare and thanks Hoda for the opportunity saying everyone at the Today Show was lovely and kind. <laughs> here's, what I wanna, here's what I wanna say about this because people are talking about how it was disrespectful to Kelly that Kelly should speak up for herself and de demand better. I agree with all of that. I am a Kelly fan. But here's what I don't like as I scanned the interwebs this weekend about this story. A lot of people were saying that, you know, because Bethany Frankel commented on it. Um, and, and, and people were commenting that they didn't like Bethany commenting on this. To me, I didn't know that Kelly was off limits to be critiqued. I don't care 
who you are in the celebrity world, you're not invincible to critique and to criticism. And I'm a Kelly fan. She should get a nice dressing room. But here's the nuance that's missing from a lot of these stories about this story. Historically, and we have somebody from the Jason show that worked at 30 Rock. Oh, Aladdin fell down. It, it, yeah, yeah. Oh, the part of it. Anyway, I wasn't say it. We, we had someone in the Jason show family that worked at 30 Rock for many years. I texted them and asked to confirm. It is true. Historically and famously, the dressing rooms at the Today Show are horrible. They're horrible for heads of state. They're horrible for <laughs> Julie Andrews. They're horrible for Barbara Streisand. There's just not, and I'm making a joke, but I'm not, there's just not a lot of good options. So it wasn't about disrespecting Kelly. I know people were like, well, J-Lo got the best uh, the best dressing room. Well, that's like saying the tallest munchkin in munchkin land. You know what I mean? There's not much difference. No. You know, I mean, it's not. So I don't, th I honestly want, the Today Show is filled with professionals who don't want to, let me be honest, who don't want to pee off PR uh, publicists. Right. They wouldn't do this to Kelly on purpose. It's not in their benefit. And as far as Bethany, not commenting again no celebrity is off limits no matter how successful you are and again another nuance missing from a lot of the critique of bethany they are forgetting that bethany and hoda have been friends for about 30 years and bethany herself has co-hosted the today show and bethany knows what the dressing rooms are like mm -hmm. so it just drives me crazy it's like think even for celebrity gossip think before you write these stories because we don't even know <laughs> because And I'll end on a defense of Kelly. We don't even know if this is true. People are assuming that she, I'm not even gonna use the word diva out. She, if she left, we don't even know that. So give Kelly the benefit of the doubt. Her whole career, we've never heard a millisecond of her being a diva, hate that. But we haven't. Mm -mm. So I'm gonna give Kelly the benefit of the doubt, but give the Today Show the benefit of the doubt as well. And she probably didn't show up this morning in sunglasses, like some of us. Oh! Is Rita Ora out there? Uh, no. Can you go get Rita to replace Kendall? <laughs> Let me write a demerit from my Aladdin pen. <laughs> we'll be right back. Back after this. play at Grand Casino, you can celebrate your birthday with us like Chuck E. Cheese. Uh, just go to eventbrite.com. That's right. Everybody wave. That's celebrating. There we go. <laughs> Welcome back. There we go. It's fun. I love the birthday club. It is fun. It's fun. We make a little party. We don't have strippers or anything, but we try. You know, yeah. We could work on it. Oh, wait, wait. Wait. Bjorn is working on that for season 10. That's right. In his Madonna costume. No, I didn't mean you, Bjorn. I mean hire one. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get back to the dish. One actress is leading the pack when it comes to the best supporting actress race in this year's Oscar. I love Divine Joy Randolph in The Holdovers. I told you guys how much I love that movie. Well, she was a guest on Watch What Happens Live last night and talked about the advice that she received from the late, great Robin Williams when she started her film career. Watch this. He went out of his way um, to spend time with me, and that was my first movie, uh, professional job I had ever done. Oh. Um, and wow. he, I didn't ask for it, but he made it his business, uh, and he shared so many things with me, and um, the do's and don'ts, and reminded me always to have fun and do it for the people. It, it was That's surreal. Great. I will never forget that experience. That's great. So hard to believe he's gone, you know? Mm -hmm. Still can't believe that. It's weird to say that he's gone. Mm -hmm. Don't you think, friends, uh, he, she, it was a call to come back. Uh, no, uh, the mo no, a small movie back in 2014. I don't think it was the comeback. Forgot what it was, but it's, uh, it's still, um, I was just telling Kendall during that clip, Robin is still one of those celebrities where it's very weird to say the late Robin Williams. Mm -hmm. You know, it's still, right, audience? It's still weird to think about he's not 
a presence right. in the well he is a presence in the world but right. I only interviewed him once for a night at the museum and you said it was like hard right Cause yeah you just didn't want anyone interview. that's ever interviewed Robin you don't really interview them you just you you wind them up and pfft, yeah 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 <laughs> they just said hey uh, this is Jason from Minneapolis and then he stood up and did a four-minute monologue about Prince uh, and he was it was great it was and fantastic that was the end. yeah that was it <laughs> let's talk uh, TV shall we Sunday night was the season finale of True Detective Night Country right yeah it's already the most watched season of the franchise this one took place during the winter in Alaska as two police officers investigate strange deaths in their small town of Ennis. Watch. This connects everything. We are this close. That night out on the ice, you saw something. I saw nothing. You're a liar. Well, I saw something. Two great performances. Jody Foster and Kaylee Reese star as the two police officers. This season is the most watched yet in the franchise and did something that not a lot of shows do. Their ratings rise in the middle. Uh, uh, usually a show maybe peaks, uh, you know, the people tune in at the beginning and drop out. This show started gaining audience smack dab in the middle when Buzz was really good. Mm -hmm. I watched the finale. I'm not going to give you, I'm not going to say a lot. I don't want to ruin it. But here's what I will tell you, just generally speaking, now that it's all over and I've watched the whole thing. Mm -hmm. uh, it is... It is fantastic on every level. Casting, directing, writing, acting, Kaylee and, and Jodie Foster. This is probably my favorite project of Jodie Foster in years. Mm -hmm. Thank you for coming to television, Jodie. Yeah. Thank you for seeing the script. And Issa Lopez. Issa Lopez, who directed and written and everything did, bravo to you. Don't worry about the haters and the guy that created it that was like, eh, this season's not good. Oh, bite me. Uh, it's a great season. I yeah. loved season one. I think like a lot of people, I didn't love two. I didn't even bother with three. Don't. So you're saying this it's one. cat litter. Don't, You don't need yeah. to have watched any of it, though. No, you don't need to watch two and three. Go right to four. Okay. Yep. Speaking of Jody, did I just say it was cat litter? Cat yeah, litter. Yeah, I did, yeah. I don't know. Specifically. Two and three. I mean, basically the cat litter yeah okay. next in the dish speaking of Jodie Foster Jodie was a guest on the British chat show the Graham Norton show I love Graham Norton and she told a terrifying story about working with a trained lion on a movie when she was a kid watch this so I was working with the stand-in lion and um, I guess he had a little uh, you know like a little piano wire that was pulling him and I was would finish the take and I was going up the up the hill and um, I, all I remember is I remember seeing his mane come around, and then he picked me up sideways and shook me in his mouth, <laughs> and turned me around, and every single person on the crew was running in the opposite direction. <laughs> and I'm like sideways, watching everybody, and they took their equipment too. Um, and I'm watching everybody leave, going like, what's happening? Then I, then I, I remember being like, oh, it's an earthquake because I was getting shaken. Um, oh. The trainer said, drop it. And because the lion was so well trained, he opened his mouth and dropped me down. And I went running and then he came after me and then just put one paw on me and then just waited like, I got her. <laughs> oh. Can you imagine? No. No. Absolutely not. No. no. The <laughs> movie, by the way, is called Napoleon and Samantha and it was Jody's film debut. So I should cancel that shoot I signed you up Yes, for. you should, yeah. <laughs> Unless you're really mad at me that day, then go ahead and put me in the lion's mouth. Well, make sure it knows how to drop it. And I'm loving, and I'm loving, do we not love Jody's chic mullet going on there? That was like, yeah. I'm sorry, chic and mullet do not go in a sentence together. You know, Jody Foster it does. I'm loving that, girl. That's okay. very Sue Ellen Ewing, 8384. Yeah. <laughs> Google it, I'm right. Next up, American Idol returned for its seventh season over there on ABC on Sunday night. And a former football player for our very own Minnesota Vikings is already earning high praises from the judges, especially Miss Katy Perry. Look. I can't count the times I almost said what's on my mind, but I did it. Just didn't. And just the other day, I wrote down all the things I'd say, but I couldn't. I 
Just cutting. Do that. If you will allow us to be your coaches, <laughs> you're gonna be, you can be just top fine. ten. You're gonna be just fine. Oh. He just didn't get through. Yeah, top ten. So. That's former wide receiver Blake Prohl singing in front of his grandma. Uh, if you didn't know who that was, and the judges earning, hello, a ticket to Hollywood. Uh, Prohl is known for performing around the Twin Cities in our area for the past few years. He was in our building several months ago. Mm -hmm. uh, did you meet him when he was here? I did not, yeah. no. But Everyone said he was very nice. He, I mean, his story is really interesting in that he hurt his knee while he was in the NFL and just he never really recovered from it after just three years. And then he found his love of music while trying to recover because he couldn't move, he couldn't walk, and uh, sang for his grandma. And his grandma was like, you're good, honey. We should keep this up. So that's that's why he ha they had her there. It was very sweet. It's a really sweet story. Uh, any guy that loves his grandma. Uh -huh. I, lo I mean, that's just right. right. I love that. Right. Oh, anybody. I'm uh, so good. She was so proud. Did you see her face when Katie was like, look at my chills. Grandma was like, mm-hmm, girl, I know. Yeah. I know. <laughs> look at my baby. And, I mean, I, you know, and he's a good-looking guy, too. He has, yeah. as they say in the business, the, the, the full package. Well, next up in the dish, make way for the next Miranda Priestly. We finally know which big name will take over the iconic role in the musical version of the mega-hit book, then movie, The Devil Wears Prada, uh, as it gets ready to open in London. Who's going to be in it? Oh, look at this. Don't just sit there. Buy tickets or something. I mean, I mean, come on. Mm -hmm. Vanessa Williams will play the boss from, from hell in the new Elton John musical. It's going to open on the West End this fall. The musical had a test run in Chicago. Uh, and let's just say less than stellar reviews. But it's been, and this, is, this happens though. This is why they preview. It's been retooled. And it's allegedly better. And it has Vanessa Williams, so I don't care how horrible it is. I'll right? go see it. Yeah. Right? You, what was her character in the show Ugly Betty? Ugly she Betty. She played like the mean boss uh, in that Wilhelmina. Too. Yes. Wilhelmina Slater. Yes. And she was so perfect. Yeah. And the fact that that just came off the top of my head. <laughs> like nothing. The scale is like this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and she was in, we had her in studio several seasons ago. And I always tell you the real deal about celebrities, whether they're, they're Dinkus Maximuses or if they're really nice. <laughs> Vanessa was the real deal. And hysterically, this was the funniest thing. Um, oh, yeah, this I was when, this. I mean, we have a pretty good budget now. This was back when literally, it was season one or two, and we had our, our whole show was done for about seventy-five bucks, and <laughs> so we don't we don't have a driver or anything. My husband had to be her driver, so Colin Colin picked Vanessa up in his car with Jeff in the front seat, like uh, driving this Daisy. You know what I mean? It was like it was like you know, and it was great. Please hop in. Please hop into my husband's uh, used Audi. Yeah, yeah. But no, it was great. He and he said she was very very. Nice. Very lovely. Yeah, we have a picture of her out in our uh, lobby. Sure do. Yeah. Next up, the first box office bomb of 2024. Final numbers are in after the President's Day weekend, and Madam Web only earned 26 million dollars over six days. Trust me, I know because I say million, that sounds like a lot. Uh, that's nothing. It's one of the worst openings for a movie based on a Marvel character ever. Like, ever, ever, ever. Not only is it bad news for the movie, but there were plans to use Madam Web to launch a new franchise in the Spider-Man universe. That franchise is now likely dead. <laughs> Yeah, you think? Yeah. <laughs> Madam, uh, overall, Madam Web right now has a 13% on Rotten Tomatoes. Ooh. That's really bad. That's really bad. <laughs> it's better than 10. I don't know, though. Yeah. I mean, it's not good. I, I said it before when we were critiquing this. The problem with the movie, I think, in part was, it sounds like a bad script, but also the marketing. Right. I know this genre. I know Marvel characters. 
I was confused looking at the trailer. Like, what? What is it? Is this in the Spider-Man? Yeah. Is this in the Spider-Man universe? Is it connected? Is it a different story? Mm -hmm. And you got cutesy with the the, the title. Again, I said this on Thursday. Mm -hmm. Call it Spider Woman. Right. You know what I mean? Then we're very clear what this is. Yeah. Madam Web could be a mystery set on a on a boat. You know what right. I mean? Well, and was it? Sounds like a clue character. Yeah. yeah. In the kitchen with the broomstick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't. I wasn't she. Correct me if I'm wrong, Spider Man people. But I think she was a very minor character in the comics, and she was like an older woman who could see the future. So truly nothing like this nothing. movie. Nothing. Nothing. So I don't know who's watching. It Betty from Anoka, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> Betty from Anoka don't know who Madam Web is. Nobody knows. No. Uh -huh. One of my favorite people from Next Level Chef will be our special guest when we return. Back in a moment. Coming up in just a little bit, you've heard me talk about Fox's Next Level Chef. I love the show, and I love her. Show me why I picked you. My special guest today is Chef Naisha Arrington. And then a little bit later, a Jason Fireside Chat. And we're opening up the mailbag to see what you have to say this week. So, grab another cup of coffee. We'll be back right after this. By the way, I want to say thanks to my, my buddy, uh, my sister from another Mr. Kendall, for filling in. Uh, you did oh, a great yes. job on, on Friday, so thank you very much. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Yeah, you did a great job. Thank you. Welcome back to the show. I don't I don't watch a ton of cooking shows on TV. Um, I love to cook, but I, I just don't. But there's one that I love, like capital L loved. It's called Next Level Chef. I'm sure a lot of you have watched it. It just returned for season three on the FOX. But before we talk about it, here's a little clip from the latest episode. Guys, one minute, one minute. Platform's heading down, it's heading to the basement. Next up is you. Come on guys, show me why I picked you. Here we go, platform's on the move, guys. Oh my God, I'm running out of time. No plate left behind, let's go. I don't have time to make sure my plate is extra beautiful. I gotta just go. Come on, Mara, let's go. Let's go. Come on. Mara, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Mara, do not miss that platform. Go, Mara. Get the food on the platform. So. I thought before we talk to Naisha, I want to give you a primer because I really want you to watch the show. Here's the deal. On the show, chefs are divided into three teams to compete in cooking challenges with guidance from chefs Gordon Ramsay, it's his production, Richard Blaze, and, oh, I hope we're going to be friends, Naisha Arrington. <laughs> I'm going to beg her to be my friend. Uh, contestants, <laughs> contestants are assigned to cook in one of three kitchens stacked on that bazillion, stacked on top of each other on that bazillion dollar soundstage. The top level has the best equipment with the modern tools, devices, Chef Ramsay's cookware. The middle, lever, me, me, the middle level has a standard commercial kitchen that you would see in about 80% of kitchens. And the bottom level is like disgusting. Uh, like <laughs> things that don't work, spatulas that are cracked, melted. The winner receives $250,000 and a one year mentorship with all three mentors. Oh, nice. Yeah, um, yeah, it's so, it's so good. Because what happens is you saw that platform mm -hmm. audience at the top. This is why I love it, and it's the little hook that makes this show different. Mm -hmm. Let's say, again, you're on the top. You're in that top kitchen. Right. And the challenge is hamburgers. Mm -hmm. Everyone has to run to that platform, and there's only so many servings on that platform. There's really good stuff like premium ground beef, but there's also really disgusting stuff like canned meat. <laughs> uh, so by the time, oh. by the time that that uh, elevator. the elevator gets to the basement there's nothing left but like platypus meat you know what i mean and it's just it's horrible so how do they yeah. ever even win how do but, they ever yeah. win on the bottom eric has had platypus yeah it's really good yeah how do they even ever win well the bottom wins sometimes because of ingenuity. It's oh. so good. And besides the contestants, and like I said, awesome set that I love so very much, one of the true reasons I'm obsessed with Next Level Chef is our next guest, Judge Naisha Harrington. Give it up, audience, and she joins us now. 
Hi, Chef. Oh, God. Look, I said at the top of the broadcast, I've been doing this for 25 years. I try to be professional. I try not to fan out. I've met a lot of people, but I just got to tell you, I love you so much. <laughs> oh, my God. It feels usual. I'm so honored to be here. Thank you. What do you... I got to ask you just a general question. I know why I love the show. I know why fans uh, love it. It's in the ratings. You can see it. Why were you drawn to this? What in the pitch made you go, oh, that's real good? Okay, so I love this question because I literally, literally could not say yes quick enough. I honestly feel like the show, being a part of this competition, in essence, was like tailored for like the cadence of how I've come out of culinary competitions myself, you know, and sort of transitioned into the judges' side. However, it keeps me in the kitchen. You know, I'm not just like at a table saying like, needs more salt. It's not, you know, depth of flavor to this dish. I get to actually be in the kitchen with these hopefuls, with these contestants vying for $250,000 you know, putting their reputations on the line. Some of them never been in professional kitchens. I get to be there as a conduit for that. And it just warms my soul every time I see that flicker of knowledge sort of pop off in their mind and they get to touch a new piece of fish or a new mushroom. And, you know, it's that data set that they garner out of this competition that just fills me with joy. Chef, what do you think Three seasons into it, you've seen it all. You've seen a variety of contestants. What do you think is still, still the biggest mistake the contestants make on every episode? Is it not grabbing enough herbs? Is it not grabbing citrus? What is it? Oh my gosh, I love this. So yeah, I am a stickler for herb usage, 100%. I think, you know, they get so fixated on the protein, right? And the yes. brown protein. Some of these chefs grab one or two supporting ingredients, but when you think about it, you have to grab those aromatics. And I think that's really what distinguishes a you know restaurant quality plate versus what a you know quick easy weekday meal is. It's the usage of the spirits. You know, is that a wine sauce? You know, the the caramelization of shallots, that je ne sais quoi that people are like, what is that? It's that, it's literally that. You know, we have a full pantry of cream, butter, stocks, you know, all the spices. So they don't need to worry about all that stuff. Grab herbs, <laughs> it's so imperative. Okay, and final question, uh, that set, Naisha, please tell me it's as amazing in person as I think that it is. And that was what, did Gordon spend what, $24 million on that set? <laughs> Yes, legitimately, and it's actually a green set, which is super cool. Um, you know, like in the essence of like yeah. it's the, how it's fueled. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's like the stature of it, when you look up at it, I mean, you feel like a tiny ant. It's like legitimately stacked on top of each other, and you have the basement that's like bare bones, the middle sort of standard working catering kitchen, if you will, and then this sort of elite three-star Michelin top level kitchen that's just like all the glitz and glamor. And they're all, you, the viewer ultimately is like spliced into that. It's almost like the viewer is the fly on the wall because it's like you get this first person experience that like you're oh. in the kitchen themselves. It's so good. Please come to Minneapolis. We have such a great food scene. You got to come visit us. And when you do, come visit us. Oh, Jason, I absolutely will. I don't know if I'll be cooking any platypus, but I'll definitely be there. Yeah. <laughs> we love you. Thank you, Chef. I can't wait to keep watching Next Level Chef. Give it up for the chef, everybody. Here's Thursday night. Thank you. On Fox. Streams the next day on Hulu. Can we just keep talking to her? I, I know. It had to end, didn't it? He's got uh, a girl crush, everybody. I do. I have a girl crush on her. She's so great. Mm -hmm. She's No, but she's just really good, and you could tell she likes the contestants, yeah. and she wants them to succeed. Cares. Yeah, she cares. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a break. We'll be back after this. Back in a moment. We've entered the get off my lawn phase of my career. Uh, but, but I, I, 
it's time for a little fireside chat. Now, as I, every time I go away for the weekend, okay, Leo, you can take the angry old man down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I like him. Yeah, I know. He's Leo, so it's me. Friendly. I know. I know. I don't know. Every time I go away, I, I kind of, for the weekend, and I go down to visit uh, Orlando or wherever, I kind of have the same observation. In this time when, you know, it seems like nobody's getting along, everybody's uh, fighting, no one can agree on anything, and people are always looking for a way to try to make that a little bit better. I, I think I found a little way, and, and it is just uh, bottom level, low level kitchen uh, kindness and manners. I, 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 uh, over the weekend, I wanted to publicly thank my mom for raising me right. Um, I'm a lot of things. I can be uh, uh, quiet, I can be bitchy, I can be, but, <laughs> but I can be difficult, but I do know that I have good manners thanks to my mom. She drilled it in me because I'm an only child and she didn't want uh, the only child syndrome to be leveled on me. So I open doors, I say hello, I, I'm respectful. If I see an older person, I let them in the elevator first and I'm just seeing as I go about my day less and less of that. So as we're all looking for things to do to make this earth that seems to be just going crazy a little bit better, let's start with something that's easy and free highs and thank yous and how are yous uh, they go a long way i told the story and i'll end with it but i'll, I'll tell it again um, I, about a year and a half ago, I met, and it's hard to make friends um, after 40. Anybody after 40, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. I met two of the most fabulous women I've ever met, and now two of my bestest friends just by saying hello. And, and it's a gift. Those two are a gift. Um, because I went to a bar at Disney World, and they were very busy, and my husband and I said, hi, how are you today? And they both looked at us like we had given them a million dollars. We hadn't. We just exhibited basic kindness. So the next time you're in Starbucks or a grocery store and the person is waiting on you, ask how they are. Just say hello and thank you and let the woman in first in the elevator and open a door for people. It goes a long way and it just might lead to a really great friendship. Yeah. We'll be right back. It is time to read and respond to what you have to say about our show. Leo, open up the mailbag. Here we go. You got me. First up, a comment from a new viewer in Chicago. Hi, Chi-Town. Charlene, that's my aunt's name, Aunt Char. Uh, Charlene says, let me tell you how much the population in the Chicagoland area enjoys your show. My only regret is that you didn't come to us sooner. I once heard Regis say his goal was to brighten his viewers' mornings so they could carry that joy through the rest of their day. Well, my friend, that is exactly what you guys have achieved. That's great. That's it. That's great. The, the, on the radio show, the, the woman, the delightful woman and husband that we took the show over from, Marjorie, she looked at Alexis, that's my radio host, and she goes, you know the best thing about this show? You have the opportunity every day to start people's day out with a laugh and smile, mm -hmm. and the TV show is an extension, even if you watch this in the afternoon, you know what I mean? Maybe we can help turn your day around, yeah. Now a comment from Barbara. Hi, Barbara. <laughs> this is our favorite. She says, hi. I've watched this show, this show. I always want to people say that. I've, I've watched this show for a while, uh, but not anymore. It's getting more and more rude and crude. And my favorite, sexually nasty. Yeah, <laughs> especially on Thursday. Uh, now, we, okay, I know. Our, our staff, all of us on the staff, all three and a half of us, we all went... What did we do on Thursday? Were there like naked people on Thursday? What well, was Thursday it? was our latest fast food field trip to Arby's. Now, and th I think this sweet woman may not have liked when our executive producer, Jeff, <laughs> spilled mint chocolate shake on his crotch. crotch. And we affectionately- It was your fault. We affectionately referred to him as Minty Crotch. Minty crotch. And, I, Minty and crotch. if that offends you, ma'am, I'm very sorry. We're, we try not to be crude. We're only here to be goofy to make you laugh. Whatever. Yeah, that's it. Speaking, thank you. Yeah, that's it. I'm not sorry. It was funny. Uh, yeah. <laughs> to that delightful woman, spin the dial. There are way more crude things on television. 
We are PG, believe me. Speaking of the fast food field trip, many of you commented on our trip to Arby's to try the mac and cheese bites. And as I said, that mint chocolate shake. Here's a clip of it right now. Eleanor says, hi, Eleanor. I woke up my sleeping baby from laughing so hard. Yeah. Sorry. We do love them. Marty says, for the record, Kendall told you a few weeks ago that she was going to order curly fries. You need to gas up Jeff's card and go back. That's yeah. right. That's right. No. <laughs> now, okay, so there's... Okay, now there's a there's a positive Kindle one. <laughs> now here's my here's my version. Gammy says, I love Kindle, but it's like having a toddler in the car. <laughs> I, Kendall, Kendall, tell them, how many times did Jeff and I go, we're going to kick you out of the car? Yeah. I'd be she, like, is she done yet? Is she leaving 17 yet? 17 she times. Done? She's never coming back. We tr we almost left her on the sidewalk 10, 12 times. We did, yeah. I just wanted my curly fries. Michael says, hi, Michael. Jeff must really hate warm mint cookies. Uh, <laughs> We're referring to our legendary executive producer's dislike of mint and desserts, and he especially says it, and everyone say it with me, I hate warm cookies. That's right. Yeah, there he is. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Sorry. He's a joy, let me tell you. Uh, while we were on that fast food field trip, we discovered how Kendall opened snack bags. Now, in case you forgot, in case you forgot, this is this was not opened by a wild animal. Uh, this this was a bag of corn nuts that Kendall opened with her dew claws. <laughs> I don't see the problem. She didn't use the top notch at the top that says tear here. She opened her mouth and ripped the middle of the bag and we got we got so many comments. Cheryl says, "Teach Kendall the right way to open a bag of chips." <laughs> Joyce in Cedar Rapids says, Kendall opens the bag of chips like they do for a walking taco. Yeah. But it's not a Thank walking you. taco. Whatever. Oh, no. Easy access. Uh, it's corn nuts. And, and Mindy says, I've never, ever, ever, ever seen someone tip open a bag, rip open a snack bag like Kendall. Has she ever noticed every other person on the planet opens bags at the top? <laughs> You just know how to do things better, and you do them your way. You're I'm right. I'm just saying. You do you, we do Try us. It. That's right. Try we'll it. be right back. Back after this. Back <laughs> in a moment. Hey, you do you, girl. <laughs> Okay, here's our quiz. All of these things happened in what year? The Oprah Winfrey Show aired its first national show in Chicago. Hands Across America helped raise money for hunger and homelessness. And the biggest movie of the year was Top Gun, featuring this song, The Danger Zone. Was it 1985, 1986, or 87? The answer when we come back. <laughs> Show quiz. These things happened in the same year. What year was it? Oprah became national. Hands Across America happened. And the biggest movie of the year was Top Gun. The answer is 1986. 1986. Yeah. How quickly did you know that answer? I know. Jason I, I know. I, I, Jeff got mad at me jokingly in our meeting. He goes, okay, we're going to do this, and we're going to do this, same. and we do our Jason Show quiz. Um, and he lists all of them, and I go, 1986! And he goes, the quiz isn't for you, butthead. It's, it's like, for the, it, like, you don't have to answer it. Yeah. But he was so proud of himself that he knew what right the top of his head. Have you ever heard of Hands Across America? Because I know you're a youngin. Sorry. No, it was great. Oh, it's exactly what... They didn't spend a lot was, of time like, working on the title. It is what you think it is. People across the country had held hands? hands from one end of the country to the other like a giant Dr. Oh. Pepper commercial. Yeah. Forrest Gump would have been so proud. He would have been, yeah. He went all the way through.
Uh, oh, which movie? Huh? Oh, it was. Oh, it wasn't the movie Us. Yeah, yeah. It was. Look. Oh, is that a horror movie? Yeah. yeah no, I don't. Do we that. did weird things in the '80s. Yeah, we yeah. did really weird things in the '80s. You don't. We say. held hands. We did. Yeah. It's just. It was across very, America. Exactly. All mm -hmm. across America. Hey, I want to thank this. As I said at the top of the show, this amazing studio audience. They give us energy. Thank you for coming. You can come visit our show. Go to eventbrite.com and search the Jason Show. Tomorrow, one of my favorites and yours, my buddy Colleen Lindstrom, returns to talk about why we should all stop apologizing for enjoying the things we love. But right now, that's going to do it for us. If you're watching and you're a kid that's being bullied, you go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. Have a good day, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow.